Hello everyone. Welcome to the next lesson of our Spring Security course. So in previous lesson, we talked about how to create and configure a custom authentication provider. Uh, so think of this as a next part of uh, our previous lesson. All right. Okay. So just to refresh again our memory and I have added a link to the description where you can get more detail about the authentication provider. But in all in all, authentication provider is the central authentication mechanism uh, within the Spring security. Uh, all it does it, it takes a request and then authenticate that request just to make sure, okay, whatever you are saying, okay, you are XYZ authentication provider make sure that uh, it validates your credential uh, and it gives a go ahead to uh, to go to the next step. All right. So that's all in all is the authentication provider. Now the question is why do we need a multiple authentication providers, right? What is the need of a multiple multiple authentication providers? Uh, in most of the cases, if you are working on a simple application, you don't need uh, more than one authentication provider. Uh, for a simple login based application, DAO authentication provider is more than sufficient. But for your enterprise applications, right, uh, that's not the case. Uh, there are and there can be a multiple scenarios, right, as I said. Uh, for enterprise applications, there will be in maybe a form where you're accepting a simple username and password and there might be LTAP authentication, there might be some external authentication, right? So for all these kind of enterprise applications, we definitely need a multiple authentication provider for our application, okay? Uh, so before we get into more deeper types, uh, if you remember the provider manager we discussed in our previous lesson, so the provider managers have a list of all the authentication providers that are available for our application and it basically iterates to each authentication provider uh, for a given request. Uh, it checks whether the given request is uh, supported by a given authentication provider. If yes, it basically hand over that request to the uh, that specific authentication provider to do the authentication. All right. Uh, and probably there is a thumb rule to have a one authentication provider per user detail service, all right? So that's all for now. Let's jump into the code where uh, we will see how to create or how to configure the multiple multiple authentication providers uh, for our Spring security application, all right? So I'm going to continue the previous lesson. We have already created a custom authentication provider in previous lesson. So I'm going to use that authentication provider. Uh, but in last lesson, uh, we oh, basically we commented out the DAO authentication provider. But in this one, I'm going to inject this custom authentication provider alongside with the DAO authentication provider. All right. So this is our custom authentication provider. Okay, so this is the one which we created in our previous lesson. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the app security quickly. If you remember, we have already injected our uh, custom authentication provider and I'm quickly going to go to our authentication provider configuration. So last time what we did is we basically commented out the DAO authentication provider, but we injected our own one. Okay. So I'm going to change it a little bit and I'm going to inject the our DAO authentication provider as well on that one. Okay. So that's the all configuration I need in order to have the multiple authentication provider. So now what going to happen is uh, our uh, our authentication manager will have a list of the authentication uh, providers uh, for every request is consults each and every authentication provider to check whether it supports that one and then it basically pass on that request okay so let's do one thing uh, our configuration is done setup is done I'm going to start the application and we are going to debug uh, the entire workflow to see how it works whether it is calling our, our custom authentication provider when we have configured multiple authentication providers or not, okay? Okay, so our application got started. Uh, what I'm going to do is, 
I'm going to fill those details and I'm going to click on the sign in button. All right, so this is our provider manager. Okay, first of all, uh, this is not other custom authentication provider. If you see the this, uh, this one, it's a provider manager. Okay, now every provider manager, as I said, right, the provider manager have a list of the authentication provider, so, and every authentication provider have this support method. Okay, let's run it. okay now we have a username and password authentication token okay and what is the provider for us we have the custom authentication provider all right so now the custom authentication providers if it does not support that one we are going to skip it otherwise we are going to go to the other all right okay this is our custom authentication provider let's run it you can see that we are logged in into our system all right uh, so I hope that gives you an understanding how easy it is uh, to configure multiple authentication provider for your application uh, again uh, maybe for your application configuring multiple authentication provider doesn't make any sense that's perfectly fine uh, but for most of the bigger applications enterprise applications uh, we may end up creating a uh, multiple configuring a multiple authentication pro provider especially if you are into the backend applications where uh, employee could be using a LDAP authentication but there might be some contractors there might be some third uh, third party uh, people who don't have the LDAP uh, setup right you, you probably want to give them a, a login form right to do a login right uh, so there are n number of scenarios but configuring uh so configuring multiple authentication providers involves multiple things first uh you may want to use out of the box authentication providers multiple authentication providers then you have to configure the list of authentication providers that's the one way uh, if you basically want to provide some other sort of a, a authentication mechanism you create your own custom providers uh, configure and uh, inject it uh, into the spring security the choice is all yours i hope this gives you a clear understanding and i hope you are liking these spring security uh, tutorials if uh, yes uh, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and share these videos thanks for watching this tutorial